What's up guys, this is Mitch. Um, I live down here in South Carolina. Um, I thought I'd make a uh, video talking about comparing and contrasting rain totals as far as using a Coco Ross gauge, rain gauge, which is what the uh, National Weather Service recommends, and a uh, weather station, which is mounted on my roof, which I'll show y'all here in a few minutes. Um, this is just my display. And you know, I, I wanted to make this video because I haven't seen it and um, I've had the same weather station the ambient weather um, 2902A model for uh, July would be two years stations really held up well for me it's a great station but back in almost a year now about March of last year 2019 I invested in a Kokoraz gauge from the National Weather Service so I could you know be legit with my reports to them here in National Weather Service here in Columbia. So I did that because um, I just, I knew that my weather station on my roof here probably wasn't pinpoint accurate. So I haven't really seen this much on YouTube, so I thought I'd uh, make a video kind of talking about how off your weather station may be, whether you have the same model I have, whether you have any other weather station. And, um, how I would recommend getting a Kokoraz gauge because to me that's pinpoint accurate but I also want to explain how having a weather station is awesome too so um, with that being said I'm going to show you each of my setup where my gauge is and where my weather station is and um, we're gonna kinda of break down some um, some totals and compare and contrast some things um, here in a second alright guys so this is um this is my Kokoraz gauge. Uh, pretty simple, I actually need to clean mine out, it's a little dirty. So um, it measures up to an inch. After it gets to up here, it overflows, and then you pour the overflow back into this. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of how that works. So if you look right here, it measures to one one hundredth of an inch. So 0 0.01, which is um, something to keep in mind as you're watching this video because it's kind of important as comparing to everything. So this is kind of where mine sits. It sits on a wooden fence, plenty of open air, uh, plenty of open sky. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna kinda go up to this gauge and this is where my weather station sits on my roof. So this is my weather station on my roof. Uh, it's pretty much just mounted up here. Nothing much to it. Just over the hang, just enough where the wind speed gets to it. But anyways, we're not gonna get into that. Um, so there's no area blocking the rain coming to my rain gauge. Um, the way this works, this is a tipping gauge. And basically it fills up with water. And every time it fills up enough for it to tip, it, it, it tips and then uh, some water comes out of it. And basically that measures 0 0.01 of an inch. So um, that's important to note because during heavy storm events, um, when it's torrential downpours, you have to question, can it keep up with that? Is it reading accurately um, compared to the rain gauge down there on the fence? I don't know. So um, we're gonna kinda get throw some numbers together and see how accurate it is during multiple rain events we've had here. Now it's March here and we just had a three or four day rain event here in South Carolina. So. We're gonna compare it to that event. I'm gonna go back to a rain event we had in July, actually July 4th, it was a severe thunderstorm where it dumped a torrential amount of rain on us in a very short period amount of time. And then compare another event that's kind of more of a moderate rain event in one day and see how close, um, you know, an average price weather station like this, which I love guys, it's a very great station, um, compares to a, I can actually show it to you down here, compares to a rain gauge down there that the National Weather Service actually prefers you use as far as you know pinpoint accurate rain totals so um, we're gonna kind of compile this stats and I'm gonna kind of break it down to you guys and tell y'all what it kind of comes up to as far as how off a weather station like this can be okay all right now it's time to break down um, which station gets more um, is it the your personal weather station, which is what PWS stands for, or is it the Coco Ross station? So <clears throat> what I found out in every event, we had a 
two storms in one day event, basically just thunderstorms, um, torrential rain, obviously falls and storms here in the south or pretty much anywhere. Um, we had a two day light rain event um, a couple weeks ago. And um, just recently, uh, we had a four day rain event. It was light to heavy at some time. Sometimes it didn't rain at all, but regardless, I mean, it, it was raining a little bit every day, if not a lot, especially March 5th, which it rained a good bit. So <clears throat> we're gonna go to the storm event because, um, you know, that, that it, it rains a ton. You got to wonder, is that weather station keeping up? So in all three cases, um, your weather station, my weather station read more than the Coca Ross station. Um, now, how much? We're about to find out. So, in the storms, we had three and a half inch per hour rates in, in both storms. Um, I went back and looked at my data off my weather station for that event, and um, I mean, it was uh, there was two separate events, and it rained like crazy in both events, and rain uh, rates uh, pushed three and a half inches in both storms. So, and that's how it is here in the South, you know. So, <clears throat> a personal weather station picked up 2.2 inches between both events. Okay, so the Cocker, uh, the, <laughs> the Coco Ross station picked up 1.91. So you can obviously look at the difference there. You deduct all that, you get up to, there is a little over a quarter inch difference. So <clears throat> obviously it, it's not pinpoint accurate. And uh, in a very heavy rain event like that, you know, you, you wouldn't think it would be. So when I did the percentage wise, the personal weather station read 16 to 17 percent more than what the you know National Weather Service prefers you to use, which is the Kokoraw station. So you come up with that. So that's something you got to think about when you get a station. Um, you go to a light rain event. The personal uh, the um, ambient weather station 2902A model, which is my weather station. Red, let's see, I'm looking at my notes over here. <clears throat> Red, point sixty sixth of an inch. Um, 66 hundredths, however you say it. I mean, it, it <laughs> however you, you want to interpret that. So the, the Coco Rod station wasn't really far off here. This is both, um, you know, not quite three-fourths of an inch. So obviously that's simple math. Um, the only difference here is six hundredths, six hundredths of an inch. So percentage-wise, what does that add up to? 10%. So it, it, your personal weather station ran 10% more than your uh, rain gauge. Um, that's during a light rain event. Two day light rain event, I think one day got uh, 0 0.45 and the other day got 0 0.21. So that's during the light rain event. Now, this one was what kind of interested me. And um, just because it was a, a long event. <clears throat> so during this four day event, a personal weather station measured this much and the rain gauge measured this much so you know it's not terribly off but you know it, it, it's a it's a good little chunk of change off so what's that add up to almost a half an inch that your personal weather station read more than the kokora station so what's that percent wise you know it's the same as the storms actually 16 to 17 percent after you do the math there so so that being said, during all this, <clears throat> what, what I come to the conclusion of, when you have light rain events, I think your personal weather station is gonna come closer to the Kokora station or a rain gauge, a more professional used rain gauge. What I was a little bit surprised with is, 
even though during this event, um, the four day rain event, the rain at no point fell harder than it did in this. I honestly thought that, and, and you know, I went back over the entire summer um, and I thought that this was a good example. You know, you had two storms in one day and everything. And I was actually impressed with the, the Ambia weather station that it was that was that close, honestly. I mean, that's a little over a quarter inch. I mean, and it was raining big time. So <clears throat> it same percentage as the four day event. Honestly, I, before I did the totals, I thought that the storm would be 25, 30% off, um, but it wasn't. Um, it did pretty well. So <clears throat> I guess the conclusion comes down to is buy a Kokora station and they're not even that much. They're like, they're about, uh, I don't know, 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, it's awesome because you can compare the rain totals during events and um, you also can help the National Weather Service out by reporting things. And um, But the great thing about a weather station is uh, that you pretty much, let me just turn this around. The great thing about a weather station is <clears throat> You know, you get to, like for instance, ambient weather. I can get on my computer at work and tell when it's raining or not. I get text alerts and I can tell when it's raining or not, wind speed and everything. So weather station is an awesome thing to have, especially the one, the model I have, the ambient weather station um, 2902A. Uh, <clears throat> um, so I recommend getting both. If you're gonna get a weather station, get uh, the Kokoraz gauge. They're not that much, and they're awesome to compare totals to. So just keep in mind when you buy a weather gauge, it's gonna be 10 to 20% off as far as rain totals. It's the same as temperatures, and I ought to do a video on that. But rain totals, you know, it's gonna be a little off. So just keep that in mind. I thought I would make a video showing your percentage wise and exactly how much it's off. So um, I hope this um, helps some people. And um, that's all I got. Y'all have an awesome day.